so the first part of our service today is going to be to replace and refill the Haldex fluid. You've got your controller here, you've got the diff here that houses all of the fluid, and you have your pump. Now there's going to be a total of four bolts you want to remove. The very top one here is going to be your uh, fill plug, you've got your drain plug, and as you guys can tell, I have already loosened these up here, but make sure that you can loosen this one here, otherwise you'll never be able to get fluid in if you drain it. So remove this, remove this, and your fluid will come out of here. Now for your pump, you've got two T30 uh, star bits that will remove one here, and then you have one essentially 180 degrees on the flip side. You will remove both of these, and your pump should be able to pull out, and fluid will drain out. I will go ahead and state this is going to be a 5 Allen and an 8 Allen. So we'll go ahead and get that going. And as I take a look at the fluid, the fluid looks pretty clear. It doesn't look dark at all in comparison to some of the other fluids that I've seen from other videos. But this one uh, definitely looks pretty decent. Now we'll go ahead and remove the pump. And the best way for you to do it is essentially go ahead and just grab it. And you're going to kind of move it back and forth. And mine actually came out pretty quick. And as you guys can tell, quite a bit of fluid came out. We'll go ahead and let this drain, and it does look as though, unfortunately with my fluid, after 60,000 miles, there definitely looks like there is some debris on here. I don't know if that's going to be from the internals, but uh, it definitely looks like there's a little debris. I'll let this hang here. We'll go ahead and let it completely drip off. And then if you can see, there's going to be two additional bolts here that hold in the filter. I determined that this is going to be a T10 star. So let's go ahead and remove that. Okay, this is going to be my filter. And up, upon close inspection, there actually doesn't seem to be any type of metal debris on here. It looks pretty clean. Uh, it's just a lot of black soot. Honestly, I don't know where that really comes from, but we'll go ahead and clean it. We'll go ahead and also wipe this whole area clean as well and as you can tell it's on my fingers and it just looks like a very fine soot uh, most likely from the internal so we'll go ahead and clean it up and replace it back in so what I went ahead and did is as you can see I clean my filter I clean around the o-rings and the uh, the head of the pump I clean the inside and unfortunately with my car here, I had a fair amount of, it looked like a very dark um, soot that was in here. And I essentially just wiped it out. Again, I don't know what that soot is from. If it's essentially very fine material from uh, the diff grinding at each other or not. But I honestly don't know how bad that is but at least it wasn't very fine chunks again it was just more of soot but it cleaned up we'll go ahead and place the pump back in i highly recommend that you guys put a little amount of grease or i'm sorry not grease but just some lube or oil uh, from what you removed onto the o-ring so that it slides in easier so we'll go ahead and 
install that real quick. It'll probably take a little force to put in. There we go. And you can pretty much hear it click right in. Okay, so the bump is in, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it. Unfortunately, I am unable to get my torque wrench in here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just use a, uh, a wrench and essentially just tighten it until about a good 15 newtons of what I think. So the pump is nice and secure. We're going to go ahead and just essentially wipe it down to make sure there's no residual fluid that is out. So if it does leak for some reason, we'll be able to see it. Now we'll go ahead and fill it up with um, some of the rear diff fluid. As you can tell, I went ahead and uh, I bought a pump from Harbor Freight, connected it to the bottle. And this from Harbor Freight actually fits directly in here. Uh, the only drawback is because it fits so perfectly and snugly, you can't see any fluid come out. So what I have already done is I've pumped about 12 to 15 pumps. And then I essentially just removed it to see if any of the fluid would start coming out. And once it comes out, you know that it's reached the point where the fluid needs to be but it hasn't come out yet. The residual you see here is actually from me pulling it. So I'll give it just a couple more pumps here. One, two, and we'll do three pumps. That is going to be a fair amount and it looks as though it is starting to come out now. So we'll just remove this here. Yep, that's about the amount that's going to come out. So what we'll go ahead and do at this point, we will just leave it to drain. We're going to go ahead, um, once it comes down to a trickle, we'll go ahead and replace the fill bolt. We're going to turn the car on and run it between three and five minutes to let the pump prime some fluid in. We're going to go ahead and fill it back up until it starts coming out and then at that point we'll go ahead and torque the bolt down and that is it to the Haldex uh, fluid change. It is very easy to do guys. Now we'll go ahead and start with the DSG service and the first thing that I am actually going to do is I'm going to remove the intake uh, I'm going to disengage my JB4 or possibly set it aside and then we're going to go ahead and access the battery and remove the battery. So I'll go ahead and get started on that right away. So I went ahead and finished the removal of the intake, the battery as well as the battery tray and as you can tell I have a lot of space to work with. So uh, I know there is a device out there that helps you to remove the filter with without removing the battery but again you guys can see how much space I have here so uh, we'll go ahead and untorque the wrench off or the filter off I should say and if you guys can take a look I have laid quite a bit of towels around because there will be some fluid that comes out and the last thing that you want to do is have it run all over your your engine bay and to remove the filter, it is going to be a 24 millimeter socket. So here is the cover, and I'm just going to essentially set it right on my blue towel here. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the filter itself. And you just want to pull it off. Looking at the color here it looks like it's pretty brown just grab it like that there's your filter right here now what I did guys was I essentially took the filter cover I put it back on the top um, very loosely and we'll go ahead and go underneath the car and drain all of the fluid now the reason why I left it uh, slightly uncovered loosely is so that the oil can drain a little faster because I believe if it is completely uh, enclosed 
uh, it's not going to drain as well. So we'll go ahead and leave it like this. We'll get underneath the car and do the drain. We are underneath the vehicle now for the drain portion for the DSG. And here is the drain bolt you want to remove. And it is actually a 14 millimeter socket, or I'm sorry, it's a 14 millimeter Allen. And we're going to go ahead and loosen it up. What I typically like to do is I will hand loosen it until the point where it feels like it's going to give. And then I'll slowly remove it, just like such. And there's going to be a fair amount of fluid that will come out. You will then have a specialized tool that will go inside that will remove or loosen a secondary valve, if you want to call it that, that will allow more fluid to come out. The next portion of the drain, you will need to remove the secondary plug that allows essentially all of the fluid to come on out. This one's going to be the most messiest one. Uh, I've got an 8 millimeter uh, Allen here that will go up inside like such. And this one, you definitely want to loosen with your finger. There's no need. As you can tell, you can slightly see that socket there. And I have left my Allen just like that so the fluid will come on out. So it's a little easier. It doesn't quite splash as much. And once it stops, we'll go ahead and remove this plug here. While it's finishing up the drain, I just wanted to show you guys the plastic uh, bit that actually goes up into the transmission. And as you can tell, this is the part that it threads on up. And you're going to have this much fluid that it actually has to uh, be put into the transmission. So as soon as this gets to a trickle, I'm going to go ahead and put this back up. We'll go ahead and finger tighten it and then you're going to have to have a specialized tool that goes inside here so that you can put the fluid back up. Now that you guys can see that um, the fluid has stopped draining, I am going to do something a little different. Now, by book, Audi will say that you need to have this tool that goes inside here and then you're going to drain from the very top into this here. But what I'm going to do a little different is I am going to put the plug back in and I'm just going to fill from the very top. Now, you do not want to fully torque this one here because you're going to have to remove it later on. I just used the old crush washer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and essentially hand tighten this here which is fine and now I'm gonna head up to the engine bay and I'm going to start filling from uh, the filter portion of the DSG transmission we're in the engine bay right now and um, let me show you guys this is the device that comes with the kit that um, connects to the bottle and the tubing the tubing actually fits into uh, the opening right there and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the valve here and let some of that fluid come on out. I wanted to quickly show you guys how I have that kit's hose into uh, the filter housing and hole itself. This is the last quart. Each one literally takes me about three minutes once you have it upside down and using gravity, I would recommend that you guys puncture a couple of holes at the very bottom of the bottle so that air is sucked in and flows much faster. So again, this is the last liter that I have here. The next step in the service is you want to put the DSG filter in. This um, this end here goes inside. And the first day he missed a short putt and it was really in grumble mode and I said the 
and then the cap will go on the whole housing and what I did was I replaced the o-ring put a nice little layer of fluid on it and we'll go ahead and just replace it now you want to go ahead and torque it down to about 25 Newton meters once that's torqued down we'll go ahead and somewhat clean up this area we'll install everything back and we're going to go ahead and proceed from that point to the very last portion of the DSG service. So the next step that we take to servicing the DSG is probably the most important step. Uh, what you're going to need VCDS to access the temperature of the DSG transmission. So the steps that you want to take are you'll turn the car on uh, give it a little bit, a couple minutes or so, and you're going to cycle through the gears going through reverse, neutral, and drive, and back into park. Uh, so keep your foot on the brake. You'll want to go ahead and go into each gear for three seconds. And you're going to use VCDS to access, hopefully you guys can see, the auto transmission. And with the newer cable, you are unfortunately not able to access the measuring block, which is 08. So you have to go through advanced measure blocks. You want to type in transmission and check transmission fluid temperature. And then what you'll see, you'll see it over here. So we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle. And we're going to watch the temperature once it reaches 35 degrees Celsius we're gonna get underneath the car and we're gonna go ahead and actually drain the excess fluid that comes out so right now it's at 32 I'm gonna go ahead and cycle through the gears foot on brake one two three into neutral one two three into drive one two three Back into neutral, same thing, one, two, three, into reverse, one, two, three, and back into park. So now we have cycled through the gears. I am going to go ahead and monitor the temperature. It's currently at 32. All right, guys, so we're underneath the car, and temperature has reached 36 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to drain the excess fluid. This is going to be a little messy. It should not burn your hand. It's only about 100, 102 degrees. So what we'll go ahead and do, slowly let this out and let it drain some. You'll probably lose quite a bit of fluid, so don't be so surprised. Hopefully you guys can see my light just died out, but we're going to go ahead and um, close this out. Put a new washer on. Temperatures still look pretty good. Sorry about my light dying guys, but uh, you get the gist of it where we essentially heated the DSG transmission up to roughly 35, 36 degrees Celsius. And let's go ahead and pull this back here. We, at that point, um, the transmission should be completely leveled out in terms of how much it needs. And we open up the drain, uh, the drain plug and let the excess DSG fluid out replace it once it um, stops dripping and all I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and torque it down to 33 foot-pounds and I did put a new crush washer 
So at this point, the DSG transmission is properly leveled out for fluid levels and it has been properly changed. So you at this point are all done. All right guys, so the fluid change for my DSG as well as Haldex has been completed and in all honesty, it's definitely an easy project that I know you guys can complete. For the Haldex system, it's simply opening up uh, the fill plug and draining everything through your drain plug and filling everything back up again. Nothing complicated at all. The only thing that I do recommend for you guys to do as part of that service is you do need to open up uh, that Haldex pump, check that screen to make sure that you've got no obstructions so that way the fluid is going to flow the way it would. And in all honesty, that is going to take you maybe an extra 15 minutes, but it gives you a lot of peace of mind that that filter is nice and unobstructed. Now, for the DSG in itself, that's probably the more complicated of the two, but it is, again, very simple. The most challenging part is removing your intake and removing your battery to give you access to the filter and removing it all together. Now, part of the DSG service that might be a little more challenging for you if you, don't, if you do not have a VAGCOM cable is the fact that you need to make sure the DSG is at proper operating temperature and in the video I had told you guys it's going to be at 35 degrees Celsius and what that does is the transmission in itself it levels its amount of fluid that it needs uh, at that 35 degrees Celsius so whether you're below that or above it what will happen is it will either uh, leave too much fluid in or it will drain too much out which may cause damage to your DSG so I highly recommend that you guys follow those steps that I did include in the video but in all uh, honesty overall it was a very simple project now if you're local and if you need someone to do it feel free to go ahead and um, just message me I can definitely help you guys out now to conclude, I do want to go ahead and thank all of my new subscribers as well as all of my current subscribers for all the support that you guys have given me. I will continue to put together some DIYs and some uh, new projects that I will have in store here. Again, thank you for your support. Please subscribe, like the videos, and uh, do not be afraid to share my stuff as well. This is Peter your Audi S3 fanatic, signing off my friends.